Danger, excitement, daring. What's going on in here? I'm building up a suspense for the kids' corner. It's going to be amazing. If you say so, Joel. I do say so. Start it up, Travis. <gasps> What a show. How'd we do, boss? Yeah, did we rake in the moolah? Not exactly, guys. We only had half the audience we did last week. But how is that possible? We're in a new city with more people in it? Surely there would be a whole bunch of people who love to see the circus. Maybe our reputation precedes us. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not seeing any proceeds from this venue, despite our reputation. No, it means when people hear about us, it might not be flattering. Not be flattering? But this is a circus! We've got clowns, we've got jugglers, we've even got a little robot dog that does all kinds of silly tricks. That's true. We do have those things. I have a feeling you have something else you want to say. Well, it's just that we used to have other stuff. More exciting stuff. Like Hernando the Fire Breather. And Paula on the Flying Trapeze. And Lucille the Lion Tamer. And Ronan the... Okay, I get it. We've had some turnover in the company, but we replaced all those people. We have new fresh acts. Yeah, Sinbad and his singing seals. And Master Xi's origami demonstrations. So what's the issue? I mean, they're great performers, but they don't bring... They're rather low energy. Low energy? Yeah, you know, when Paula was flying through the air with the greatest of ease, the crowd was on the edge of their seats. Yeah, and so was I. What if she got hurt? What if Hernando burnt the whole place down? You see, those acts were just too dangerous to keep around. What if Master Xi gets a paper cut? What if some of Sinbad's singing seals slip on soap? Oh, I, I hadn't thought of that. I'll be right back. Where are you going, boss? To go buy Xi some safety gloves. I don't think she was listening to us. Me either. Speaking of listening, want to listen to the radio? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the main event. Before your very eyes, you will see acts that will astound and amaze you. And now for the main event, put your hands together for Chelsea on the high wire. Do you have to do that every time, Peter? Sure, it sets the scene. It makes me nervous is what it does. The tightrope is only a foot off the ground, and there are plenty of safety mats under you. You'll be fine. Um, what's going on in here? Hi, Brooke. You're about to witness the greatest feat of all time. I am? Yeah. Mr. Jacob set up the community center's tightrope for us. Uh, why? So we can learn how to walk on a tightrope? Yeah, not that hard to figure out there, Brooke. Right. But aren't those dangerous? You might fall. Duh. That's why we put these gym mats down. See? Ugh! Nothing to it. Still, I'd be more comfortable if you didn't play on that, especially when Mr. Jacobs isn't even here. He's here. He's outside weeding the garden. Can we just find something else to do? But I want to practice. But he's not watching you do this. You might get hurt. How would Mr. Jacobs watching us keep us more safe? Yeah, it's not like we're doing anything more dangerous than riding our bikes or playing basketball outside. I suppose. Here's an idea. How about you watch us, and if we get hurt, you can tell Mr. Jacobs. Good idea, Chelsea. Thanks. You can even listen to the radio while you watch. All right. How's the tightrope walking going, kids? Pretty good. I almost got halfway across one time. That's not bad for a morning of practice. Great job, Peter. How about you, Chelsea? I keep falling off after a few steps, but I'm taking my time. Peter's going as fast as he can, so I don't know if it really counts as halfway when you're practically jumping at the end. You were jumping off of this before I got here? Oh, hi, Brooke. Glad to see you. Well, at least someone is. Oh, what do you mean? She came in trying to get us to stop our practicing. He was talking to me, Pete. I was just trying to keep everybody safe. Sorry, but not sorry. I don't see why you should be sorry. I'm glad you're concerned about safety. You are? <laughs> you think I want you to be unsafe? Of course not. 
But Brooke was being a worry wart and trying to get us to stop, even though you made sure we weren't going to get hurt. Worry wart? I see. Is there anything particularly dangerous that I overlooked, Brooke? I mean, not that I saw, but I just don't think kids should be doing this kind of thing without. You know what? Forget it. No, no, no. I'm glad you're concerned, and I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Well, obviously you've thought of everything, so why should I bother saying anything? I wouldn't go that far. I try to do my best to keep you kids safe when I can. But at the same time, I don't think it's my job to make sure you don't do anything that has the slightest chance of resulting in your getting hurt in any way. You don't think so? I mean, I could wrap you up in bubble wrap and roll you home every time you come to visit, but I don't think either of us would like that. The hard truth is, despite all of grown-up kind's efforts, kids are going to get bumps and scrapes, and it's all part of growing up. Obviously, I'm not going to be hoping that you get hurt, but at the same time, worrying about it the whole time isn't going to make it any less likely to happen. Do you have a drama script about this, Mr. Jacobs? We're at the community center, Peter. I don't think he's got random scripts in his back pocket that have something to do with this. <laughs> no, but I do have a few of them saved in a cloud account, and if I can get the office printers to work with my phone, we might be in business. We can listen to the radio while we wait, then. Okay. Maybe I'm missing something here. Drama scripts? Don't worry, you'll like it. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the adorable drama, The Mighty Storm, an adapted biblical teaching about worry. Once upon a time, in the big woods, there was a little hedgehog named Buttercup who lived with her friends on a rocky hill next to a clearing. Hello, I'm very glad to meet you, but I'm on the lookout for storm clouds. You haven't seen any, have you? Every morning, Buttercup would climb to the top of a log in the clearing and gaze up at the sky. You never can tell when the next big storm will come and bring devastation to the forest. Buttercup, won't you come to play? Not now. I'm too worried about the storms. Buttercup's friends looked at the sky, which, though there were some clouds here and there, didn't seem to indicate a coming storm. Buttercup, there is no storm. What are you talking about? You never know. There could be a storm coming, and it might just destroy anything in its path. You've been standing in the sun too long, Buttercup. Come on, my dad's making a picnic for us. A picnic in the middle of a storm? Are you nuts? Not as nuts as some hedgehogs I could mention. Are you coming to the picnic? I wouldn't miss it. And with that, her friends went off to have a great day. Buttercup sat and worried about the possibilities of storms for the rest of the day, and though she wanted to sleep that night, she kept peeking out her window to see if a storm had indeed arrived. You never know when one might appear out of nowhere. The next morning, she was right back on top of the log, looking at the sky, worrying about storms. Hi, Buttercup. You look tired. Didn't you sleep? No, I was too worried about the storm. You know there are storms all the time, right? Uh, yeah. That's why I'm worried about them. But I've seen lots of storms, and I'm fine. I don't think you have to be losing sleep over it. But Buttercup would not be dissuaded. Day after day, night after night, she worried and fretted about the possibility of storms until she was so exhausted that she fell into her bed and. Buttercup, wake up! Huh? You slept right through it. Through what? It was crazy. It was the biggest storm I've ever seen. The old owl's tree got knocked over and there was even a flood in the valley. My cousin Rabbit had to come stay with me and everything. There was a storm? Yeah, the thing you've been worried about for the whole story finally came and you missed it all. The moral is that worrying about something that might happen doesn't do us any good. You miss out on the good things God has for you, and it doesn't actually stop anything bad from happening. Instead, God tells us to trust Him and not to worry, because it's just a waste of time. Oh, almost. Did you see that? 
I was so close to getting across that time. Ah, that was pretty good, Chelsea. Um, Mr. Jacobs, can I ask you a question? Sure, Brooke. Everything okay? Yeah, sort of. I guess I'm kind of confused. Anything I can clear up? You were talking earlier about how worrying about stuff won't stop them from happening, and that God doesn't want us to worry about anything. Matthew 6. Uh, okay, but does that mean we should not care about anything? Shouldn't we care if someone is in danger, or be ready for if something, like, a big storm or something is coming our way? I see what you're saying, and I think you're right. We definitely should care about others and be prepared for hard times. But I don't think that's what God was talking about when he said not to worry. Then what does he mean? The way I think of it is God wants us to trust him in the things we can't control and to obey him in the ways we can. Things like accidents and disasters are not things that are in our control. So we have to trust God to take care of them and not worry. On the other hand, verses like Deuteronomy 22.8 Romans 14, 13, and 1 Timothy 5, 8, God wants us to care about other people, taking precautions to keep them safe and cared for. That kind of goes without saying, Mr. Jacobs. Doesn't half of the Bible just say love others? (laughs) It might as well, Peter. Jesus tells us that if we do that and love God, we're doing everything right. But all that to say, God wants us to take care of and use everything we have, mind, strength, and heart to serve him and our neighbors. So, what about ourselves? Well, that's a good question. And I think a lot of Bible verses like Ephesians 5.29 and Matthew 6.25 make it clear that keeping our bodies safe and healthy is something God has made obvious to all of us. He also points out in 1 Timothy 4.8 that we should also be concerned with the safety and health of our spirits. That's why he tells us in passages like 1 Corinthians 6, that we need to use our bodies wisely and not to do things that would harm us both spiritually and physically. So, I'm not sure what that means, but I'll look into it. Yeah, me too. Good idea. I'm sure talking to your parents or pastor would help too. Yeah, good point. I guess we're done with the tightrope then. Do you need us to help you put it away? I think I can handle it. In exchange for a favor? Sure. Want to turn off the radio? Oh, right. I've got it.